Hey everyone, after the disappointment that was Kung Fu Panda 4, I was really hoping the next big movie I was looking forward to this year would be really what I was hoping it would be. Unlike Kung Fu Panda 4, I walked out of Godzilla X Kong The New Empire very entertained and glad I paid to go to the local theater to watch it. Was the movie perfect? No. Was it worth the watch? Yes. Its action and setup for the Titans and the buildup of their story was the real highlight of this film, as was needed. Even though the human element of this movie did have some of my curiosity as well, the central characters, the Titans, were what made me truly enjoy the film. I still have to be clear and say there were certain things I thought could have been explored more and explained regarding certain plot elements in character history. Nevertheless, this movie was a great addition to the MonsterVerse and the fictional world it has created. With this film, one of its most defining successful elements was the action and fight scenes involving the Titans. The battles we got were major spectacles that displayed the power and ferocity of these creatures that they could and did unleash. We saw Godzilla at some of his most ferocious in this movie with how he brutally killed Scylla first, then Tiamat. I honestly thought Tiamat would give Godzilla a far more brutal battle than was actually presented. Given the stories of Tiamat and Legend and how she was presented in the movie, I thought she would be one of Godzilla's most challenging opponents, especially with them in the water, where she actually had the advantage over her opponent. And as Goji Center explained in a video of theirs, which I will leave in the link in the description below, in a comic tied to the franchise, she almost killed Godzilla. So this scene in the film is actually kind of inconsistent. Kong also had his moments in this film, with some being the most entertaining. Using Suko as a weapon against Scarpin's 18 really was a surprise to say the least. Basically just Kong kind of hulking out. I'm surprised Suko wasn't severely injured from how brutal Kong was swinging him around and hitting the apes. Though one of my favorite moments in the movie was when that one ape who was talking shit to Kong and Kong just punched him and killed him with one punch. One punch! <laughs> one punch! I was not expecting that and it made me laugh so much and it still does. Kong didn't let the date get away with hurting the one ape he was terrorizing. Kong beat his chest and roared to let the brutal followers of Scar King's tribe know that he wasn't playing around. And getting to the biggest part, the final battle was really epic. Godzilla, Kong, Mothra, Suko vs. Scar King, his army, and poor Shimo was what everyone had been waiting for. Both sides of immense powerhouses battling it out for the fate of the planet was incredible. The destruction unleashed and the hate both sides had for one another really made the battle all the more personal and impactful. Given the absolute mayhem Scar King unleashed really set the tone for how important and how fierce the battle was. You also gotta love the moment where Godzilla and Kong charge in the battle side by side. While the human part of the movie does add to the bigger picture of this fictional world and its stories, or perhaps grounds it, or takes away from the story of the Titans depending on your view, the main reason, or rather only reason, for some I believe, people watch these movies is because of the Titans. Gradually over time, the MonsterVerse films have given more screen time to its titular characters and the other Titans that inhabit their world. This movie really did hone in on them more than the other films, I believe. I do feel that this was more of a Kong movie than a Godzilla movie, to be clear. This is understandable given the introduction of the other eight titans. As this would have the most impact on Kong's journey in this movie given the longest time, people thought he was the last of his kind. Even though the Scar King had his own connection to Godzilla, his impact on Kong was much more powerful. As to Godzilla, Scar King was arguably just another enemy. To Kong though, he was what he never wanted to discover in his own people or related to his people. Just a little bit more on that later. Kong had wanted so badly to find others like him, and to have his first meetings with them to be attacked and nearly killed was a horrifying twist of fate. It was really evident how utterly shocking these events were for Kong, was when the eight titans beat on the ground in their chest before and during Kong's fight with Scar King, given he didn't at first seem to understand or recognize what they were doing. If I analyze this thing correctly, as he was still trying to grasp the cruel way of life Scar King forced upon his tribe. Though we did get to see the gradual bond between Kong and Super grow. In some ways, at first, it was a more brutal version of the dynamic between Kratos and Atreus in God of War. Yes, Kong had a Kratos vibe to me in this movie. The new Kratos, not the... Yeah, not that one. 
Suko found a father in Kong that he didn't have with Scar King. More on this later. I think this movie paid more respect to Kong than he was given in Godzilla vs. Kong in both action and character in certain ways. In this movie, he actually managed to briefly overpower Godzilla arguably fairly quickly and showed his definite potential slash destiny as the leader for the ape tribe. Helping the one ape that had been beaten by the other that Kong eventually killed showed he was a real leader, one that helps lift others up and is ready to defend them. <laughs> I just can't help but love that scene with Kong helping the one ape up and he just one shots the other. <laughs> Now before I get into the more, I guess you could say, flawed elements of the movie, I want to talk about Scar King. He was being called the biggest threat seen yet in the MonsterVerse. Some people were talking about how this wasn't true. You had powerhouse threats like King Ghidorah and Mechagodzilla that were two of some of the most powerful characters in the franchise's history. And to be clear, either of them are individually more powerful than Scar King. This doesn't necessarily mean Scar King wasn't what some were calling him. Was he the most powerful titan seen? No, what he was was a tyrant who had his own personal army of ape titans alongside the enslaved Shimo as his personal mount and attack titan, who is easily one of the most powerful titans ever in the MonsterVerse. Some speculating she was the one who froze King Ghidorah so long ago, though this wasn't confirmed in the film. Not to mention he was incredibly devious and cunning, likely the most intelligent of the antagonists we've seen in the MonsterVerse, at least amongst the titans. He was also a pretty impressive fighter, given how he was able to nearly defeat Kong with his greater skill, speed, and agility. Given though he wasn't physically stronger than Kong, he nearly beat him because of his greater skill and experience. His sadism just made him drag the fight out just long enough for Kong to free himself. He's also, I feel, the most cruel. I mean, he had the severed heads of some of his tribe on spikes for heaven's sake. And just as a show of control and power over his tribe to Kong, he pushed that one ape who cared for Suko into lava. He did it while smiling too. He did what the chameleon failed to do in Kung Fu Panda 4. Introduce him as a foe to be feared and hated. He was a bully and more considering how he laughed at Kong, threatened Suko, and just his personality overall. He was arrogant, cruel, and not to mention abusive to his mates, or more accurately, victims of another horrific kind of cruelty and his other offspring. That's one of the best parts of his character because of how much of his personality we saw. Every small moment and detail hit the mark in showing his massive ego. Given he's an ape, his individual persona is going to be easier to understand because he's able to express how he's feeling slash acting easier than, say, Ghidorah was because of his facial expressions alone. He was a bully to the extreme, and the moments during and after his defeat were so epic. It was good to see him finally be beat in such a spectacular fashion, with Shima especially getting a revenge on him for everything he did to her. Don't get me wrong, I really did enjoy this film, and I feel it's arguably the most entertaining of the Monster Burst franchise. I do feel though that there were some things left unanswered in the movie, or there were certain story and or character elements that I thought didn't make sense compared to others. On one hand, why was Godzilla still willing to attack Kong in this movie? I mean, by the end of Godzilla vs. Kong, the latter had saved the former's life, and I thought they had earned one another's respect. Godzilla left after Kong had put down the axe, showing he accepted Kong. Their fight in this movie, and the matter of Godzilla at first not being willing to accept Kong in the surface, didn't really feel like what happened in the final battle of the previous movie mattered at all. Even though it seems like now, hopefully, he accepts Kong, this should have been how it was from the start of this movie. There's also the matter of the origins of the Titans, which was a part of the synopsis of this film. It didn't feel like there was much of a plot line around this. We also didn't get much of, or any explanation why the Iwi, or some of them, went from the Hollow Earth to the surface, along with the various Titans. The Kong species was also a bit of a mysterious matter. Like, was Starking the same species as Kong, or was he a subspecies, or an entirely new or old, yet closely related species? Are there different subgroups of them? Like, some of them look like gorillas, where others look like bonobos or common chimpanzees, while the rarest look like orangutans? It's not necessarily a huge deal, I just thought it would have been interesting to know specifically if possible. 
though it would have really expanded the lore for the cons. Also, did anyone else feel like the sizes of the Titans were inconsistent within this film in comparison to the rest of the movies, or even just in this film? I mean, I know the guys in Jody's Corner mentioned this in their immediate spoiler-free review of the movie. To be clear, I'm not talking about whether Suko is taller than Khan was in this first movie. That wasn't even really mentioned or brought up in this film, so I'm not going to focus on it. It felt like at times that Godzilla and Kong were smaller in this film than they were in the previous one. Compare Kong to Doug in both movies. The latter didn't even appear to be up to Kong's knees when Kong was running on all floors in the last movie, while in this movie he's at least up to his knees. There's also Shimo's size in the film. When she's first introduced as she's about to fire on Kong, at the shoulder from several feet away she appears to be at least twice as tall as him, but at the end she's comparatively as big next to him as a horse is to a human. Not saying that isn't big, she just appeared to be bigger earlier in the movie than seemingly shrunk later, or maybe I misjudged the size. Speaking of Shimo, I was honestly thinking she would be like this titan that all others revered and respected that had a role in nature like Godzilla, Well, after she's free by Suko, she seems to be, I don't want to say pet because I think that's actually demeaning to animals like dogs and cats, in all honesty, to say they're not unique or important, I understand and apologize if that's how it comes across. I thought she was a titan of standing that Skarking had robbed of her place in the natural world by making her a slave. Also, how did Skarking enslave her in the first place? How did that crystal hurt her, and how did he discover it would do that? It feels like they should have explained that. There's also the matter that I think Skarking, while a good antagonist, I actually thought he wasn't fully fleshed out. Like, there was a lot of speculation about his character and his abilities slash skills. His blue eyes were a big part of the mystery and the significance of his character. His eyes had many suspecting him to have some kind of power link with the energies in the whole earth. It helped make him the tyrant we witnessed him to be, and perhaps why he controlled Shima. Don't get me wrong, Skarking definitely sold himself as a memorable antagonist in this movie. His personality was one of the best parts of his character. I just feel his backstory is a little unexplored. His character isn't as bad as Chameleon by any means. I just would have thought we'd get some explanation or showings of his character that many fans had theories about. It also would have been helpful to explore his character with more in-depth and longer scenes of him and Suko. Given that he's Suko's father, we could have seen why Skarking didn't like his son. Maybe Suko wasn't the eight titan he wanted. There were similarities between them as in the first scenes involving Suko who trip Kong at different points with both intended, or at least the one at the lake scene, to have Kong killed, thus showing Suko similar cunning to his father and arguable brutal opportunism. That said, it was shown Suko had a genuine bond with the one that Skarking pushed into lava, proven by the older trying to protect Suko and Suko screaming in despair at witnessing their death. Which showed Suko actually cared for others while Scar King didn't, which led in unison with Suko bonding with Kong, to Suko aiding Kong and helping defeat Scar King. This dynamic was something I thought could have been explored more. In comparison to Kong, Godzilla's role in this movie was arguably less prominent than it was in Godzilla vs. Kong. He still had that role as a guardian of nature, and his role to keep balance was still as strong as ever. But I figured we'd get more scenes involving his history with Scar King and his tribe. It would have added to why he seemed to enjoy nearly killing Kong in the previous movie, as Godzilla didn't show that much enjoyment, or really at all, after he killed Ghidorah. I mean, the movie is called Godzilla x Kong, so I would have thought his role in the movie would be bigger. That isn't to say they should have shortened Kong's role in story. It should have just had it to where they explore Godzilla's story while also having Kong as fleshed out in this movie as it was. He felt more like a supporting character than a main character, to be frank. Godzilla x Kong The New Empire is an incredibly entertaining movie and one of the best this year so far. Its great action and tight spectacles make for a heart-pounding story that has you on the edge of your seat. While certain elements of the movie could have been done better and explored, I felt the movie we got definitely was and is worth a watch. It's a great addition to the monsterverse that adds to the world building and the characters, specifically the titans we've come to follow. It had one of the franchise's best villains in Scar King, and has definitely advanced Kong's story in a great direction along with adding in Suko's character, which has considerable room for exploration. I truly enjoyed this movie, and I look forward to seeing where else the monsterverse goes in the future. Nevertheless, let me know your thoughts on the movie. What did you think of the story, its characters, and where the franchise is at now? I hope you all liked this video. Make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Thank you all for watching.